Assalamualaikum and a very good day to all of you. So today we will proceed with lecture 8 which is uh, Deep and Elimus attribute. So basically this attribute uh, is one of the common structure attribute uh, for seismic interpretations that can uh, provide valuable insights into uh, subsurface geology particularly on the structural uh, geology. So uh, for the course learning outcome for today's lecture, uh, it will be addressing for deep and endemous attribute will be addressing at least two uh, CLO, which is CLO number two, analyze and interpret the result from seismic attribute application on surface data, and number three to demonstrate the ability to use 3D seismic data visualizations and interpretation software. So by the end of uh, today's lecture. Uh, student will be able to number one uh, explain the concept of deep uh, and azimuth in seismic data use uh, deep and azimuth attribute to visualize uh, the geometry of subsurface structure and finally uh, interpret seismic data using uh, deep and azimuth uh, attribute so we go a little bit on the introductions uh, of a deep and azimuth slash uh, strike and deep mm. Uh, attribute. So uh, the structural attributes uh, quantify properties of uh, fault, fold, and diapers, uh, including uh, deep slope, azimuth, seismic shaded uh, relief, and curvature. So uh, as you know that uh, deep is the angle between the horizontal plane and seismic reflection, and is measured in uh, a unit of degree, and it can be used to determine uh, the orientation of fault or fold. So basic uh, rule for deep angle is uh, the, the degree is between uh, 0 to 90 and uh, 0 degree means that the plane is totally horizontal while 90 degree is a perfect vertical. While azimuth uh, is the direction of the seismic reflection measured clockwise uh, from north. So it is also measured in a degree uh, and it can be used to determine uh, the strike uh, of the structure. So uh, slope of um, uh, it, slope is the steepness of the seismic uh, reflection, and is measured in in percent as well. And it can be used to determine uh, the amount of relief in a, a seismic image. And uh, seismic shaded uh, relief uh, is a type of seismic image that show the apparent topography in uh, subsurface uh, features. So it's, it is creating uh, the point is created by combining deep and azimuth uh, information to create a shaded image that resemble uh, to a topographic uh, uh, topographic map. So deep and azimuth can be calculated uh, using a variety uh, methods, including deep scanning, uh, complex seismic trace analysis uh, in bracket CSTA, uh, plane wave destructor, and also we have a G G G GST, which is gradient. Uh, sorry, G, GCA, eh? uh, G, uh, gradient square tensor. Uh, all this matter will be explained later uh, in this lecture. So for qualitative uh, seismic interpretation, deep and azimuth are often combined as apparent deep or as shaded relief. Uh, unlike deep or true dipping, uh, apparent deep is uh, the angle between seismic reflection and uh, horizontal plane. Uh, as it appears on the seismic image, just like what you have uh, seen, ataupun been shown in uh, on figure one, and for CSTA, uh, the complex seismic trace uh, analysis is a common method uh, for computing deep slope and azimuth from seismic data. Uh, CSTA works. Uh, by analyzing the instantaneous frequency and horizontal wave number of seismic traces and uh, it's actually a very powerful tool for computing deep slope and azimuth from seismic data so it can be used to create a high quality of seismic uh, image that later can be used uh, for qualitative seismic interpretation so in terms of mathematical definitions the deep and azimuth are a, a planar uh, element of seismic reflector uh, that can be determined by looking uh, at how uh, amplitude of the seismic signal changes over uh, a small distance. So this information uh, somehow can be used to understand the orientation of the reflector and its relationship to uh, the other reflector in the seismic volume. So here is the definitions and the uh, of deep and azimuth that I believe you guys are already aware on this. If you recall back uh, in structured geology course and basically uh, azimuth 
uh, is uh, similar to stride in structured geology. So by point uh, in space, if you refer to this figure, it has a three component of uh, x, y, and z at different directions and perpendicular to each other. It will be a reference uh, to unit normal that been shown in uh, yellow plate over here to a surface and a reflector where nx uh, and ny is the horizontal components of the normal to the plane at each cross line and in line respectively while nz uh, nz is the vertical components of the normal uh, to the plane in geology uh, we define uh, uh, a planar interface such as a formation top or internal bedding surface by means of uh, appearance uh, delta x and delta y or commonly by the surface deep uh, delta and it strikes so delta x is uh, basically uh, the apparent deep in the x direction uh, or inline deep while for the delta y is the apparent deep in the y directions or we call it as a cross line deep so for method used in deep and azimuth we have four conventional method okay we have plenty more but this is uh, these are the uh, most common method applied for deep and azimuth number one is deep scanning number two is plane wave destructor number three is gradient uh, square tensor so complex seismic trace analysis uh, this one is already been listed out uh, just now but we're going to go a bit on uh, introduction uh, or overview for each uh, method so deep scanning uh, method is a simple method that involves uh, measuring the angle between a seismic reflection and horizontal plane so it's very similar like semblan uh, as you can see on the top right where we have three color uh, of line we have blue line uh, we have yellow and we have a green line so the deeping scanning uh, is preset to a minimum and maximum angle uh, as shown in the blue line and the deeping candidate uh, is in yellow line uh, is the trial actually yeah, of the method to find a good response of reflector uh, and then after it's aligned with the maximum coherent i mean uh, the most uh, upper linear uh, continuous so that representing the deeping structure it will turn into a green line so and then we move into the uh, next method which is the plane uh, wave destructor so this method estimates reflection slope uh, through uh, a least a square feet to the wave equations so basically this method uh, use the wavelet transformer uh, to decompose a seismic data into plane wave so that the deep and azimuth of each plane uh, can be calculated uh, and if you look at uh, on the bottom right over here you can see that before and after a plane wave destruction filter is applied on the left and right uh, respectively so uh, on the left uh, we can have uh, we can see that we have two stratigraphy uh, structure unit or faces with dipping uh, faces on the top uh, and while folded faces uh, on the bottom so the stratigraphic unconformity is clearly seen uh, in this part however it's better to delineate between these two stratigraphy unit or faces uh, using uh, the applied plane wave destructure uh, on the right side over here so the gradient uh, square tensor uh, determine reflection slope from gradient uh, of the seismic data which basically using a mathematical matrix uh, we already learned this uh, back in curvature if you recall so this method uh, measure uh, the rate of change of seismic amplitude in two dimension remember we have uh, north south um, east west uh, so that uh, it can be determined from the uh, eigen values and eigen uh, factors sorry eigen vectors uh, of the gradient square tensor so lastly kita ada, we have the apparent slope uh, deep method or we call it as a complex seismic trace analysis CSTA so this is uh, actually a method uh, ataupun a way of, met of method to combine the deep and azimuth of a geological features to create an image that appear more natural than either in deep uh, or azimuth alone so this is because the apparent uh, slope and deep image 
takes into account uh, the way that the feature would be appear uh, and, and, and to, to, to an uh, observer standing on, on the ground so rather than uh, just the way it will, it will be appear in view from above it looks like uh, illuminated, illuminated uh, apparent uh, topography when uh, we display uh, sorry when we display it in uh, monochrome I mean uh, black black and white now, now we take a look on the example uh, in slope and gradient for all uh, the formatted that I mentioned before so uh, on the left uh, is the reflection slope uh, that measure the steepness uh, of the dipping structure using different method uh, application like uh, A is dipping uh, scanning, B is CSTA, C is uh, the plane wave destructor, and D is gradient square tensor. So the hot the hot color is actually representing high degree of dipping 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 structure close to at the dipping plane uh, close to uh, ninety degree vertical. So on the right uh, is the reflection azimuth that measure the direction of dipping from the north using a different method uh, application uh, like uh, A is dipping scanning, B is CSTA, C uh, is uh, the plane wave destructor and uh, D is gradient square tensor. So the color is uh, representing uh, the orientation of uh, azimuth that closer to the uh, northern uh, direction. So if you look at the point, if you go uh, overall uh, from this uh, attribute, we can say that uh, the hot color regions in the center uh, shows that it has high uh, degree of dipping ataupun very slopey uh, and the cool uh, degree on the azimuth means that the azimuth or the strike of the plane is almost parallel to the uh, northern uh, direction for all uh, this method application. So on true dip and azimuth on seismic, um, when seismic data is collected, uh, it is affected by the velocity of, of the subsurface. So this can cause distortions in the data which can make it difficult to uh, accurately estimate the depth or, or and, and orientation of uh, each reflector. So however, the true deep and azimuth of reflector are less sensitive to uh, this velocity distortion that the reflector depth uh, measurement. So this is because true depth, uh, true deep and azimuth are calculated from uh, seismic data itself, uh, while the reflected depth measurement is calculated using the uh, velocity model. So as you know, the velocity model is a mathematical representation uh, of the speed of sound or uh, wave in the subsurface. Uh, so this is actually uh, used to convert the seismic data from time domain to uh, depth domain. So, however, the velocity model is not uh, really perfect and there are always error uh, in it. So, this error can be used uh, the reflected depth uh, measurement to be uh, not uh, really accurate. So, the true deep and azimuth on the other hand are not as sensitive to the long wavelength error in the velocity model, meaning that at the deeper part. So, this is because the long wavelength at uh, this error are more pronounced at the deeper part uh, of the uh, seismic data where the reflector are uh, further apart. Okay, however, the true deep and azimuth are cal calculated from the seismic data itself so that they are not uh, really affected uh, by the distance between the uh, reflector. So as a result, the true deep and azimuth are more accurate way to estimate orientation of reflector uh, in time migrated uh, seismic data than reflectors uh, depth measurement. So this is why uh, this attribute uh, often used in seismic uh, interpretations. So there are three main uh, methods by uh, calculating the true deep and azimuth of reflected in seismic data. One is a uh, color display. Uh, number two is uh, visualization tools, and number three is uh, explicit uh, calculation of higher order uh, devi uh, deviations. So color display. This method involves uh, assigning uh, different colors to different values of, of the true deep and azimuth. So this makes it easy to visualize the true deep and azimuth of the reflector in the seismic data. So visualization tools. So this method uh, easy involves using software that can uh, visualize the seismic data in three dimension. Uh, this allow the interpreter to see uh, the true deep and azimuth of uh, the reflector from uh, different 
angles. And lastly, we have explicit calculation higher uh, order deviations. So this method is the most accurate one, uh, ataupun the accurate way to calculate the true dip and azimuth, because it's involved using mathematical mathematical equations to calculate true dip uh, and azimuth from the seismic data. And if you can see here, we have two figures shown in, on on your right. On the top part, we can see that we have the seismic section, while on the bottom part, uh, we have the and azimuth uh, applications. On these sections, uh, on this section, we can see that we barely can, ataupun we very difficult to identify the structure and also uh, the horizons. Okay, probably something something happening on the top, but at, at the deeper part, we can see that uh, there is uh, a loss of uh, amplitudes that where we can we cannot see much on uh, in terms of the uh, reflector. So, however, after you apply uh, the true deep and azimuth uh, on the seismic section, you can see that we have a clear representations of the seismic uh, uh, reflector or horizons. At least we have three uh, dominant horizon that be marked by red red color, showing that it has a, a good reflector, uh, ataupun uh, a good deep and azimuth uh, signal. And uh, just not uh, for the horizon, it's also uh, has the ability to identify the discontinuity. For example, we have at least three obvious uh, fault over here. Maybe we have more, but uh, at least it highlights uh, the discontinuity uh, from these seismic sections that uh, previously uh, these sections is unable to do so. Now we take a look on the method of estimating uh, true and azimuth dips. So there are actually many different methods for estimating the true azimuth uh, dip of reflector in seismic data. Some of the most common methods include number one, uh, aligning uh, the phase derived from complex trace uh, analysis. Second, discretely scanning for the most uh, coherent planar uh, reflector. Uh, and method three is a multi-window estimates of 3D vector dip by cross-correlating uh, uh, the gradient of the data. Take a look at the method number one first. So aligning the phase derived from complex uh, trace analysis. So this method involves um, by aligning the phase of the seismic data along uh, a particular uh, axis. Many angle, many axis. We can do that. The angle between the uh, aligned phase and the vertical axis is then used to estimate uh, the true dip. So, uh, and then uh, the second method uh, is discreetly uh, scanning for the most coherent planar uh, reflector. So this method involves uh, scanning the seismic data for the most coherent uh, planar uh, reflector. So this uh, orientation of this reflector is then used to estimate uh, the true deep and uh, azimuth. And then we have a uh, multi-window estimate the 3D vector deep by cross-correlating by uh, the gradient of the data. So this method involves uh, cross-correlating the gradient of the seismic data in uh, different window. Lah. So the result of uh, the cross correlations are then used to estimate uh, the true deep and azimuth uh, of the reflector in the data. So each of these method uh, actually has its own uh, advantages and disadvantages. Okay, for example, the aligning uh, the phase method is relatively simple to implement, but it can be uh, sensitive toward noise. And then the discretely scanning method is more about robust to noise, but it can be more time consuming. Uh, the multi-window method is the most uh, accurate, but it can be um, very, very expensive. So the best method uh, to use will depend on uh, the specification uh, ataupun the application, the specific application. For let's say, if you want to have a fast result, uh, speed is important, then uh, the discrete uh, scanning method may be the best choice. So if the accuracy is preferable, then multi-window method uh, may be the best choice, even though it's a is quite 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 of expensive. So next is how to display uh, the deep vector. So number one, um, uh, apparent deep image uh, on the uh, Cartesian axis. So this is the simplest way to display the deep vector. So the deep, deep vector is actually represented by uh, a line, and the length of the line represent. Uh, length of the line is actually represents uh, the magnitude of uh, the dip so the direction of the line uh, represent uh, the azimuth uh, of the uh, of the dips so next uh, shaded relief 
uh, or illumination image that uh, with the interpreter de uh, determination of the uh, angles. So this method use uh, shaded relief to visualize uh, the deep vector. Okay, normally we do it in a monochrome, uh, so that it will appear to be a to to give you a good result of a uh, dipping angle. So the angle of illumination is determined by us, and then the deep vector is then displayed as a shaded relief image. So this method can be used to create more uh, realistic image uh, of the deep vector. And finally, we have a composite deep uh, and azimuth uh, multi-attribute. Uh, so this is the most comprehensive way uh, to display the deep vector. It's combined uh, the apparent deep uh, image with the shaded uh, relief uh, image. So the coloring uh, image is uh, the apparent deep image, while the shaded relief uh, image is uh, the, 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 deep, the deep vector. And it also includes the azimuth uh, of the deep. Okay, sorry. Meaning that um, the azimuth is in color while the deep is in uh, black and white. So we can do comparison uh, straight away uh, to see uh, the response ataupun how uh, the structures in the subsurface uh, is look like by combining these two uh, factors. So this method provides the most information about the deep vector and it is the most useful for uh, interpretations. So this is another example of uh, the deep and azimuth application which is uh, the instantaneous deep magnitude and instantaneous deep azimuth. So the instantaneous deep magnitude can be used to visualize uh, the geometry of subsurface structure such as fault, fold and bedding planes. And it also can be uh, used to estimate the thickness of the geological units. While uh, the instantaneous deep azimuth uh, it also can be used to visualize the orientation of subsurface structures like uh, what instant, instantaneous deep magnitudes uh, capable with. So it also can be used to estimate the direction of fluid flow in a reservoir. On the, on the left, we have a seismic sections and a time slice where basically we can say that we have a, a kind of dome shape like anticline structure especially when we validate it with the circular features on the time structure map. And the instantaneous deep magnitude uh, over here shows the dipping angle that mostly highlighted in the central region uh, of the anticlinal structure which, which has a pretty uh, angular slope of uh, or, or, or very steep. Meanwhile, uh, the instantaneous deep azimuth uh, on the bottom shows a split of high degree azimuth on the left and low degree azimuth uh, on the right, basically showing the orientation of the dipping from the north. Uh, the degree of the azimuth is exactly flipping for each side and conformable with uh, the time structure map where uh, this area of circular features uh, and this area has different degree of uh, orientation. Apparent deep images. So deep is a vector consisting of deep magnitude and deep azimuth, as we know. However, we usually don't see or display uh, deep as a vector, even though we can calculate it uh, its vector. So this is because it can be difficult to um, actually visualize a vector in three dimensions, 3D. Uh, instead, we often use apparent deep image to visualize deep when an apparent deep uh, image is a two-dimensional two-dimensional image that show uh, the apparent deep of a reflector at each point and, and can see from a particular direction. So picture below here uh, show uh, on how the vector or direction of dipping uh, plays a role in determining the true deep. Some available data is sometimes is just showing the apparent deep at different angle of view. So rotation uh, of applying mathematical deep calculations uh, according to the angle is suggested is proposed to be applied so that we can aware the presence of uh, apparent deep so again if you look at from this angle we might think that this is uh, the true deep however the actual deep is actually from this side so we need to change our view so that we can get uh, true deep so apparent deep normally has lower uh, in terms of uh, the gradient i mean the uh, dipping angle compared to the uh, true deep. So that's why we need to be aware, especially when we do the uh, dipping structure analysis. So let's take a look on the example from uh, this seismic sections. So this green line is a, a, a dipping horizon of Cardo. Uh, 
it is actually uh, easy to visualize two time structure uh, slice uh, as it was uh, viewed so that we can get uh, a better understanding ataupun a clear picture on how uh, the, the the apparent dips uh, image is actually uh, look like whether we are actually picking this, the, the correct or true uh, dipping or, or not. So uh, the dip azimuth uh, is plotted at many angles uh, for this case uh, at this uh, time structure map. Uh, for this case, it's plotted from 0 degree, 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree, uh, 120 degree and uh, 150 degree with a direction angle shown in a white arrow over there. So the dipping uh, white line features that has been circled in red doesn't change much if you can see here. Okay, this change uh, at 0 degree is okay, 30 degree is still uh, white in color. White in color meaning that it has a, a greater in terms of the dipping. However, uh, the, 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 the apparent dip will be appear uh, as a black in color, uh, lower dipping degree compared to the true dip, uh, dip when the degree of uh, view is more than 100 uh, or more than uh, 90 degree. It's common degree for the uh, dipping. So when it beyond then uh, 90 degree, it turns into this one is for 120. We, we, we can't see much, but we can see that the dipping angle is a, a little bit uh, shifted compared to the original one. And it turns to be uh, a bit darker, meaning that uh, it has lower in terms of the dipping. And for 150, the orientation is okay, uh, quite similar to the uh, the, the degree be below than 90 degree. However, if you can see here, it has a black, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, black in color in terms of uh, the line, showing that it has low uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the degree, meaning that we uh, appear ataupun we can observe ataupun uh, the apparent resistivity is actually uh, appearing. Allah. Now we move a little bit on the fundamental of shaded relief. So this uh, this shaded relief is quite common uh, used in GIS applications, but we also can apply this shaded relief in this uh, deep and azimuth attribute. So shaded relief is a function of the angle of incidence <coughs> of the illumination, which depends on the where they are. Uh, depend on the reflection orientation and the position of uh, the suns. So this means that uh, the brighter the pixels in a shaded re uh, relief image, the more perpendicular the reflection surface is to the uh, direction of illumination. Conversely, the darker the pixel, the more parallel the reflection surface uh, is to the direction of illumination. And uh, shading can be controlled by uh, exaggerating reflection slope uh, to enhance contrast or by adjusting surfaces to appear dull like shale shiny light water or moderately shiny um, light quartz, <coughs> uh, quartz sand. So this means that the interpreter can control how much uh, contrast is visible in the shaded relief image by adjusting the steepness of the reflection slope uh, or the amount of reflectance. For example, if the interpreter, uh, if we <coughs> want to highlight a subtle for, okay, they might uh, exaggerate the reflection slope uh, to make them more visible. <clears throat> uh, third, because uh, shaded relief depends on the sun uh, position, it acts as a directional uh, filter. So this means that the shaded relief uh, image <clears throat> will only uh, show features uh, that are oriented in certain uh, direction. For example, if the sun is positioned directly overhead, the shaded relief image uh, will only show features that are uh, vertical. So shaded relief is a seismic attribute that is used to transform seismic data into realistic looking apparent topography. So this can be done by illuminating the seismic data from a single uh, point source uh, such as the sun. Uh, the brightness of each pixel in the shaded relief image is then determined by the angle of incidence of the light which is a function of the deep and azimuth of the reflection surface. <coughs> shaded relief is uniquely for 3D data only because it requires the concept of data using uh, ataupun being thought uh, of a collection of, of a surface that can be illuminated simultaneously. 
So in three, in two D seismic data, the deep azimuth uh, of each reflection surface can only be determined at a single point in 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 the time. So this means that uh, it is not. Uh, possible to create a shaded relief image that show the entire 2D uh, seismic data volume. Uh, <clears throat> shaded, re uh, shaded relief displays uh, facilitate geologic uh, understanding because uh, apparent topography often suggests through uh, geology. For example, uh, a fault that uh, appears as a steep cliff in a shaded relief uh, image is likely to, to be a significant uh, structural feature. Similarly, a stratigraphy unit uh, that appears as a ridge in a shaded relief image is likely to be thick and, and continuous unit. Uh, by varying the inclinations and uh, azimuths of the suns, the, in the interpreter can uh, non-linearly enhance or diminish uh, the features of interest or steering the light uh, outside the interpreter's view. So this <clears throat> can be used to highlight the specific features in the seismic data or to obscure features that are not of interest. If you look at this picture here, <clears throat> we can see uh, the standard time slice and deep azimuth application on the bottom picture of it. And shaded relief is applied on the uh, standard time slice, and we can see that some features that appear on the uh, appears here to be correlatable to deep and azimuth. For example, this one. This liniment and this liniment uh, shows that uh, it has the similar features. Uh, for example, this liniment features on the shadow is also appear in deep uh, azimuth. So, and this is what happened when we apply the reflection continuity, which is the exaggeration function of the shadow relief that was applied on deep uh, the deep azimuth attribute, where 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 we can see uh, more features are uh, actually uh, appearing. Consider the entire volume as a collection of reflection surfaces and consider every data point in the volume as lying on some reflection surface. So this means <clears throat> that we can think of a seismic volume as a stack of thin or uh, flat layers. So each layer uh, has a different dip and azimuth which tell us how it oriented in the subsurface. Uh, illuminate this uh, surface uh, simultaneously with a single distant light source which is the sun because the sun is distance illumination is uniform in directions and uh, intensity throughout the seismic data volume. So this means that the angle of uh, incidence of the light is actually the same for all uh, of the reflection surfaces in the, in the volume. And then compute uh, the shaded relief of a surface at relative uh, illuminations, which is some functions of the angle between the incident light and the reflection uh, surface. So this means that uh, the brighter the pixels in the shaded relief image, the more perpendicular uh, the reflection surface is to, to the direction of illumination. Conversely, the darker the pixel, uh, the more parallel the reflection surface is to uh, the direction of illuminations. So the orientations of the reflection surface are found through available reflection dip and azimuth attribute which measure the strike and dip of the buried rock uh, layers. <clears throat> So this means that we can use uh, the deep and azimuth attribute to uh, determine the angle of incidence of the light for each reflection surface uh, in the volumes. Uh, decide whether the surface uh, appear dull or shiny. Exaggerate the slope in your data to enhance uh, the relief. So this means that uh, we can control uh, the appearance of the shaded relief image by adjusting uh, the reflectance uh, of the surface. For example, if we want to make the image more contrasty, we can make uh, the surface appear uh, a bit more shinier. Uh, we can also exaggerate uh, the slopes in data to enhance uh, the relief. So this figure is a good example of how the application of shaded relief attributes on the seismic data. So the shaded relief attribute, if we observe here, uh, it, show, it shows most likely the shaded regions uh, on the left part, where we need to expect the location of the signs from the from the right, where uh, is cover is cover the regions on the left flanks on the anticlines over here, and because of that, more features will be focusing on the vertical structures like numbers of faults, several faults on the left sides compared to the uh, right region. So the blending of the combination of the seismic 3D data and shaded relief attribute will uh, produce an uh, illuminated seismic reflection where we can see the 
continuity of the structure features uh, especially on the left uh, we can see vertically and also horizontally so this is somehow increase our confidence as interpreter to proceed with uh, better interpretations so this is another example of shaded relief uh, applications so this time the angle of the sun is from uh, the left and we can see some features also appear because of the shadow or shaded relief due to the presence of the sun for example we can see uh, several uh, fog features over here and on the uh, time slice or uh, vertical or horizontal <coughs> uh, sections we can see that uh, the, the, the continuations of the faults probably uh, in, in, in horizontal way <coughs> So the illumination of shadow at several features like faults and also fold uh, increase our interpretation uh, accuracy and if we want to have uh, more information uh, perhaps we, we can just uh, adjust the angle of the light source to the other corners okay for example from these sides from these sides and from another angle so that we can gain more data more information and more structure features that will appear and helps uh, the interpretations so there are actually three common methods in shaded relief one is dull surface second is shiny and bright surface and thirdly is uh, form models so a dull surface is uh, in, in shaded relief attribute is a surface that reflect lights in all directions equally so this means that the brightness of a dull surface is not affected by the angle of the incidence of the light and so in shaded relief a dull surface will appear as uniform gray color so this is because the dull surface does not have a shiny or reflective surface uh, instead it has a matte mate or rough surface that uh, scattered light in all directions so this means that no matter what angle the light hits the surface the same amount of light will be reflected back so dull surfaces are often used in shaded relief uh, attribute because they can help to uh, highlight subtle features in the data for example if you're trying to identify a fault line <coughs> in a seismic volume, you, you, you might use a dull surface to make the fault lines more visible. So the benefit of using a dull surface in shaded relief attributes includes um, one, it can help uh, to highlight subtle features in the data. Second, they can be used to create uniform gray, gray color, so which uh, can be very helpful for comparing different data sets. Third, they are relatively easy to implement. We just click and it will be uh, uh, applied. But the drawback of this method attributes uh, includes uh, they, they can make the data look uh, less uh, realistic because it's too gray, dark gray in color. Sometimes we cannot uh, see the realistic in terms of the image. So they can be difficult. This is the second. They can be difficult to use it to create a, a sense of uh, depth. And thirdly, they can be less effective of highlighting features that are oriented at the steep angle to uh, directions of uh, illuminations. Next is a shiny uh, bright surface. So a shiny bright surface reflects light in more directional ways than a dull surface. So this means that the brightness of a shiny uh, bright surface is affected by the angle of incidence of the light. So in the shaded relief, a shiny bright surface uh, will appear brighter when it is oriented perpendicular to the directions of uh, illuminations so if the illumination is from this angle then uh, it will be more brighter from that particular uh, angle which is parallel to, or perpendicular to the illuminations and somehow it will be darker when it's oriented uh, parallel to the directions of the illuminations so this is because shiny bright surface has a smooth surface that reflect uh, light in a specific directions so when the light hits uh, the surface uh, at the perpendicular angles, all the light is uh, reflected back in the same uh, direction. However, when the light hits the surface uh, at a parallel angle, the light is scattered at all directions. Uh, this means that the less uh, light is reflected back and the surface uh, appears uh, a bit darker. Uh, shiny bright surfaces are often used in shaded relief attribute because they can help to create a, a sense uh, of depth in the data for example if you're trying to identify a fault line in seismic volume uh, you might use a shiny bright uh, surface to make fault uh, line appears uh, more uh, prominent so the benefits of using this um, <clears throat> this method is uh, similar like 
uh, dial surface. Uh, uh, it can help to create a sense of data in uh, uh, depth of uh, in, in the data. They can be used to highlight subtle features in the data, and they can be used to create more realistic appearance uh, of the data. This one is uh, the uh, better applications than uh, dull dull surface. However, the drawbacks uh, less less natural, and it can be difficult to use to compare uh, different data set, and uh, they can be less uh, effective uh, at highlighting features that are oriented at a steep angle to the direction of illuminations. Now we move into the third method, which is uh, the form models. So uh, the form model is a more advanced method for calculating uh, the shading of uh, a surface. So the form models uh, take into account the reflections of the surface, the angle of the incident of the light and the smoothness of the surface. So this result a more realistic shading effect than the simple method described above. So uh, form model is a function of three components. Remember this. And number one is uh, ambient light. So this is uh, the light uh, that is reflected from all surfaces, regardless of the angle of incidence. Uh, number two is diffuse light. Uh, diffuse light. So this is the light uh, that is reflected from a surface in the same directions as the incident angle. And lastly is uh, the specular light. So this is the light that is reflected from a surface in a mirror-like fashion. And uh, the form model is often used in shaded relief attribute because it creates more realistic appearance uh, of the data compared to the uh, first and the second method. Okay, for example, if you're trying to create a realistic uh, rendering of a rock surface, you might use the form model to make uh, the surface appear, uh, appear shiny and uh, reflective. So the benefit of using a uh, form model in, in, in shaded relief uh, attributes Number one, it can create more realistic appearance of, of the data compared to the method one and two. And it can be used to highlight uh, subtle features in data more than method one and two. And it can be used to create a, a sense of uh, depth in the data. However, uh, this, this, uh, this method is uh, quite expensive uh, and difficult to use uh, to compare different data set and can less uh, effective uh, at highlighting features that are oriented. Uh, at a steep angle to the direction of uh, illuminations. So this is another example of shaded relief uh, attributes. So on the left, uh, we have a time slice to seismic data. So this is a 2D representation of the data, but it can be used to get a sense of the 3D structure uh, of the subsurface. So the other three figures uh, show the shaded relief application at different illumination angles and, and, and parameters. So the second uh, figures over here, the second figure shows the shaded relief uh, with the sun elevated at 30 degrees above the horizontal uh, yellow arrow line. So this means that the light is coming from uh, that particular angle and the shadow are cast in the opposite directions. So the result is a lighter gray on the overall map which indicates greater illuminations. So this illumination highlights some important pre-interpreted features such as uh, faults and also uh, faults like I showed over here. So the third figures, the third figure show uh, shows the shaded relief with the sun elevated at uh, 30 degrees <coughs> orthogonally above the horizontal yellow arrow line. So this is the same as the second figure but the illumination is uh, coming from a uh, slightly different angle. So the result is a similar lighter uh, gray color but the shadow are slightly different so this reveal more features uh, from the particular uh, fr from that particular angle for example this this feature is highlighted more and this uh, features is also highlighted more and is extended uh, a bit more compared to the uh, second figures and 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 finally the fourth figure shows the shaded relief uh, with the uh, shininess parameter that been reduced so this means that uh, the surface in, in the image are not uh, as reflective and the shadow are not as uh, sharp uh, as shown uh, previously. So uh, the result is more comprehensive view of the structure features in the data. So this figures is a combination of the seconds and the third figures actually and it provides a good overview of the 3D uh, structure of the uh, subsurface. So in, in general, um, Shaded relief is a uh, very good tool uh, for visualizing uh, seismic data by adjusting the illumination angles and parameter which can highlight uh, different features in the data and get a better understanding uh, on the 3D uh, structure of the, 
uh, subsurface. So, in summary, uh, deep and azimuth attribute are set of uh, attribute that describe the orientations of seismic reflector. Uh, the deep attribute is the angle between the reflectors and uh, horizontal plane and the azimuth attribute is the direction in which the uh, reflector is actually dipping. So deep and azimuth attribute can be estimated uh, by calculating uh, uh, can be estimated and calculated using three methods. We have a temporal and spatial derivations or uh, derivative from complex trace uh, analysis. So this method use uh, the complex trace analysis to estimate the deep and azimuth of a reflector. And then we have a deep scan in, in the most uh, obvious reflector dipping. Uh, so this method use a deep scan uh, to identify the most obvious reflector dipping and then estimate the deep and azimuth uh, of the reflector. And then we have a window estimate uh, 3D deep where this method use a window to estimate a 3D deep uh, of a reflector. And um, <coughs> displaying uh, or uh, deep and azimuth uh, can be uh, in three ways. One, through apparent deep images. So, um, this image uh, shows the apparent deep of a reflector at a different angle of uh, incidence. And we have a composite uh, display. So, this display shows uh, the deep and azimuth of reflector in a single image. While, uh, lastly, we have a shaded relief uh, method where we have a uh, discuss is in very long run so this displays uh, uses light and shadow to create a three-dimensional 3d representation of a, a reflector so these are the list of references that i use as a material for this lecture and mostly uh, from uh, barns um, for especially for the shaded relief uh, in display of seismic data and and the attributes and um, for overall uh, materials uh, and also examples, uh, I took it from uh, Chopra and uh, Muffet uh, in an SEG book 2007. Uh, with that, uh, thank you and I uh, hope that we can meet again uh, in the next uh, lecture.